Step back in time to the golden age of ancient Egypt. The land of pyramids and pharaohs, where power is everything and only the strongest survive. Where people pass on the endless story of the young King Tutankhamun, but also the beginning of a larger story of power, intrigue and cunning. Play is I, the powerful man behind the throne of Tutankhamun, who has risen from the shadows to become one of ancient Egypt's most intriguing figures. Join us as we explore the life and legacy of King I, Tutankhamun's cunning successor. Please hit the like button, share and subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss a video and help us deliver even more great content. Click that like button and sign up today. King I was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt, reigning for a brief period, from 1323 to 1319 BC. He was born in the city of Akhmam, located in Upper Egypt, during the reign of Pharaoh Amenhotep III. His father was a man named Yuya, who was once a high-ranking official in the imperial court. Yuya was a powerful figure in the truest sense of the word, with connections to both the military and the priesthood, and he amassed a considerable amount of fortune and influence over the course of his career. His mother, Thuya, was an Egyptian noblewoman and the mother of the famous queen Taya. As a young man, I followed in his father's footsteps and began serving in the court herself. He quickly established himself as a capable administrator and strategist, earning the favor of a number of different pharaohs throughout his career. It was during his time at court that he most likely met his future wife, Tay. He had close relations with both horse owners and military commanders. However, his most important title, Father of God, indicates that he had a particularly close relationship with the royal family. It has even been speculated that I and his wife Tay may have been the parents of Nefertiti, wife of Akhenaten, further highlighting their position of influence in the court. Tutankhamun's reign preceded that of King I, and was marked by a considerable conflict between the old polytheism and the new monotheism. Tutankhamun ascended the throne at a young age, and was aided in his imperial duties by his predecessor's two closest advisors, Vizier I and Shogun Hormhet. Under I's direction, Tutankhamun's nine-year reign saw a return to the worship of the old gods. With that came the restoration of power of the Amun priesthood, which had lost its influence during the reign of Akhenaten. There have been various theories about Tutankhamun's death, with some historians suggesting that I may have played a role in his death. In 1968, X-ray examinations of Tutankhamun's body led to the theory that I had assassinated him to usurp the throne. This theory is further bolstered by claims that Ankhizanamun, Tutankhamun's wife, appealed to the Hittite king for help as the only surviving royal bloodline. However, the Hittite prince sent to marry her was murdered as soon as he reached the Egyptian border. And then, I actually proceeded to marry Ankhizanamun. However, there are also some theories that Tutankhamun died from a combination of malaria, Kohler's disease and a broken leg. Other experts believe he may have sickle cell disease. Tutankhamun's sudden death at a young age sent Egypt into turmoil. With no surviving heirs left, the kingdom fell into a power vacuum. His vizier I quickly filled the void, conducting funeral rites and identifying himself as heir to the throne. Hormhead, the army commander, had been appointed deputy of the Lord of the Two Lands under Tutankhamun and was supposed to succeed him. However, I had other plans. It seems that he sought to ascend the throne by legitimizing his claim through the burial of Tutankhamun and marriage to his widow, Ankhizanamun. When I ascended the throne after the death of the young king, he apparently took over and usurped both the tomb and the temple of Medine Habu of Tutankhamun in Thebes. Tutankhamun was later buried in a hastily renovated private tomb in a much larger tomb was built for I in the nearby Western Valley. Even so, I continued to honor his young predecessor by adding texts of his own in addition to that of Tutankhamun. I's actions after ascending the throne illustrate the complex and often ruthless politics of ancient Egypt. While he may have honored the memory of Tutankhamun in some ways, he also seems to have used the legacy of his predecessor to strengthen his rule. This suggests that power struggles and political intrigue were common features of ancient Egyptian society, and that even the most revered pharaohs were not immune to them. As his death approached, I planned his succession, choosing Nachman as his heir. However, I's plan was ultimately unsuccessful, as Hormhead became the last ruler of the Fifth Dynasty instead of Nachman. 
an inscription on the mortuary statue of Nachman makes it clear that he was intended to be I's successor. The fact that Nachman has been crowned crown prince leaves no doubt that he is preparing to take the throne. The inscription also implies that Nachman is I's son or adopted son. Egyptologists Aidan Dodson and Diane Hilton analyzed the statue and noted that it was broken behind a sign that reads Son of the King. Nachman's donation for the burial of Tutankhamun indicates that he held the title Son of the King under I. This theory is further supported by evidence of intentional damage to the statue of Nachman, as I was one of the Amarna pharaohs whose legacy was destroyed by later rulers. Unfortunately, most of I's monuments and temples were destroyed or appropriated by Hormhead, making it difficult to determine the true length of his reign. Nachman's stela suggests that Hormheb ruled for only four years and one month. However, recent research indicates that Hormheb's reign may actually be much longer, perhaps 14 years and a month. The final resting place of Pharaoh I is Tomb WV-23, also known as KV-23, located in the western valley of the Kings near present-day Luxor. The tomb was discovered by archaeologist Giovanni Battista Belzoni in 1816. Unfortunately, the burial chamber was damaged and destroyed in antiquity, and the tomb has been desecrated since time immemorial. It's a sad reminder of how little ancient civilizations valued their cultural heritage. Archaeologists observed that I's name had been removed from the tomb almost everywhere, except for a few marks on the walls and coffin. They copied some pictures on the wall and made notes about the sarcophagus. Unfortunately, the sarcophagus has been damaged since ancient times, not long after I's burial. Perhaps most tragically, the sarcophagus was deliberately damaged and broken into pieces by his successor, Hormhead. This act of vandalism has robbed us of a priceless artifact that can tell us more about the life and times of Pharaoh I. Thankfully, the sarcophagus was later rebuilt and moved to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, where it can still be seen today. However, in 1972, the intact coffin lid was discovered by Otto Shadden. The cap was buried under the ruins of this king's tomb and still preserves I's shell. Despite the damage caused, the tomb's decorations are still impressive. The colors are vivid and the descriptions are similar in content and color to Tutankhamun's tomb, with some scenes being identical. An unusual feature of his tomb is the image of the four sons of Horus, which appears above the doorway leading to a small covered room. This is not usually shown in other royal tombs and is usually only present in the burials of the nobility. On the west wall of the burial chamber, the scene depicts I and his wife Tay hunting in the swamp. This suggests that he was particularly fond of these activities, or perhaps he considered himself a patron of the arts and requested unique drawings in his mausoleum. The planning of Pharaoh I's tomb is quite unique compared to previous royal tombs. It resembles Akhenaten's tomb in Amarna more than any other. The tomb has a straight shaft, the well chamber does not have a well, and the hall has columns used as a burial chamber. Outside the burial chamber, there was a small, unadorned room. The mausoleum was built on a large scale, the corridor is wider than the mausoleum before World War XXII. Notably, the slots for the beams used to lower coffins in the corridor, have reappeared for the first time since the tomb of Queen Hatshepsut. Each pharaoh's grave is a testament to their power and status in life, as well as their belief in the afterlife. Although Pharaoh I's tomb may have been desecrated and damaged over time, its structure and design still have immense historical significance and value. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to see you in the upcoming videos.